Hi everyone, it's Steph from above, welcome back to the channel and the third video of my Improve Your Game series will be dedicated to cruisers. We've already had a guide on how to play CV, we've already got a the guide on how to play destroyers and now it's time to focus on cruisers, one of the hardest classes of ships to play in the game. And also one of the most diverse ones, uh, so that's why I've split the, uh, this guide into three parts. The first one will be about light cruisers, the second one, which you will be watching next week, will be about heavy cruisers, and the final one will be about a very complicated topic to explain, but essential to master if you want to do well with any ship, but most importantly with cruisers, it will be about map awareness. That's going to be a really, really great video. So let's start with light cruisers and you know the mechanism, you know how my guide work, we will work with rules. Rule number one, no YOLO. I repeat, no YOLO, unless you want to go back to port early, then voila. So cruisers are essentially support ships, that means that you will never go anywhere alone on the map unless you are 100% so certain that it's safe for you. Here I'm kindly following my destroyer, nothing has been spotted at D yet. We are suspecting that the enemy team has gone completely towards A and B, but we are not sure yet, so I'm really, really prudently, carefully staying behind my destroyer's so spot for me, and I'm always willing to go back. And that takes us to rule number two, which is read the map. Uh, so far we haven't seen any activity at D, but we have spotted a couple of ships at B and we have spotted a couple of planes actually going there. So we suspect that the enemy fleet is positioned over there and that they're actually all over there. But still I'm being careful, I'm following my destroyer and I'm preparing myself to flank them. That's going to take us to rule number three, which is know your targets. You're a light cruiser, so you are meant to go after destroyers and then other cruisers, preferably light cruisers, and then finally CVs and battleships. Your job is to take down other destroyers and that's what we're going to do right now because since we were quite careful we were not surprised by that enemy Akatsuki who was just trying probably to position itself to torp us at D and we're going to finish him in one of two circles. There we go and that's it. Bye bye. That's our first kill of the game. You notice that I am going to move towards the torpedoes. I'm not going to move away from them because I want to keep myself in the game. I want to be flanking as quickly as possible, so I'm going to take a couple of torpedoes on purpose to be able to seize opportunities on the battlefield. Takes us to rule number four, which is focus on suspecting enemies. How can you be sure that an enemy is not looking at you or interested in you? Well, you simply zoom in and you look at the position of its guns. And here, for example, that was Virginia is absolutely not looking at me. It will take him more than 30 seconds to turn his turrets. So I simply get 30 seconds of free fire. And that's going to take us to rule number five. Rule number five is hit weak spots of the enemy ships. That's very, very easy to say, a little bit more complicated to do, but here you see that I'm trying to hit the bow of the West Virginia. That's the weakest part of this harbor. If I hit, well, the first salvo I took while I was explaining the previous hole, hit the main part of the ship and you see that that almost dealt no damage. But here it's going to stop there and all my shells are going to land on the weaker part of its armor and that's 12 hits and almost all of them were full pens. And now it's an easy target, it's basically over for him. And there we are, registering full pens with each shot. So really, for battleships, it's quite easy. You focus on the front or the rear of the ship until they go down. If you got good HE, which is not the case of the mains, but say you're in a, in a source, a IF or the grass, then you can simply throw HE at them and set them up. And that's the end of the West Virginia. And this situation is a combination of rule numbers three and five. I'm not going to hit the CV. I'm going to focus on the Brooklyn because that's the biggest threat to me right now. I can always go back to the CV and the Brooklyn is actually not looking at me, it's focusing on our destroyer. So again, we are in support of our team and our team is actually helping us right now. Now he's focusing us, but he's already gone. He has already lost half of his health and I'm not trying to aim for weak spots. I'm just trying to hit the center of the ship to get citadels, which is what we do right there because I know the Brooklyn is an easy pen for my AP shells. And here we are, just getting pens with our shots in the middle of the Brooklyn, and that's the end. And now we can turn our attention to the CV who's gone in the meantime, and we're going to be engaging another cruiser again. 
And that's really the main strength of the cruisers and especially for light cruisers. Uh, at the fourth minute of the video we were one ship down and now we're basically two ship up, the game is over. Uh, simply because we were able to flank the enemy team, to spot a gap in their positioning and to attack and to basically maximize our DPM on targets that were simply not looking at us. Like for example at Algeria, is absolutely not looking at us, he's not focused. So we're going to finish him in two salvos because uh, it doesn't have a lot of armor and you see that we always get full points in those ships. And that's the end of the Algerie. And not yet, not yet, maybe this one, hopefully. There we go, and we get kill number four, thanks to the ability of a light cruiser to engage or disengage at will. So yeah, that's the end of the guide. Uh, we're gonna be hunting for that Bismarck with the 4v1, so there is no suspense anymore. And that's, in a sense, the nature of the gameplays with light cruisers. It's kind of difficult to make a guide that you can apply to every single one of them, every single ship, because there are quite, quite a lot of differences between those. And for example, at the same tier, you've got the Atlanta, you've got the York, uh, you've got the Shores, for example, who all have kind of different gameplays. But um, there are a number of common elements that you can incorporate into your gameplay, which I've tried highlighting here. So we're getting close to engaging that Bismarck. You see the flexibility of light cruisers and be able to get quickly into a favorable position. Uh, but then you have to be aware of one thing. If you want to deal damage, do not play cruisers. If you want to be MVP all the time, do not play cruisers. Play destroyers, play battleships, play civis, but cruisers are in a sense a support class. They are not meant to be on the front lines, they are not meant to be at the center of attention, and obviously we will never get a Kraken with the mains. As usual, we get 4 kills and we don't even finish MVP and that's what I was saying, it's the very essence of cruiser gameplay. You're a support ship and our destroyer was able to achieve MVP because we supported him. We took care of the threats, we limited the main threats for him when he needed it. So well done Tintin, 97,000 damage with the Kagero. Uh, good team, we worked very well together to achieve that result and in a sense that's the nature of a cruiser being a support ship, a very very flexible and enjoyable class to play but I repeat, if you want to be MVP all the time just go with battleships like everybody else, ok? Allez. That was Gabe from above, I will recap the rules and uh, I will see you next week for the second part of the cruiser's guide which will be about heavy cruisers with the Hipper.